Today on Outside the Box Reviews, we are back on LV223, looking at the NECA Prometheus Series 2, and this is David 8. Probably my favorite character from the movie, I don't know, but between Prometheus and X-Men First Class, I've kind of become a Michael Fassbender fan, and I was very excited to go and pick up this figure of him. This is also the first, I guess we can call it human figure we're getting in the Prometheus line. Previously we'd gotten the chair suit and the pressure suit engineer. Then we got the two pack of the other pressure suit engineer with the battle damage and the big trilobite tentacle rape monster. And in this wave we got David and the Deacon. But still, in all technicality, we haven't gotten any human characters yet because David is the token android of this movie. But enough small talk, let's jump right into the review and take a closer look at David. Because the trick to reviewing is not minding that it hurts. David only really comes with one accessory and it's his little flashlight box. Just a simple little rectangular piece here. It has the white areas that are supposed to represent the light up areas. It has a flashlight on top as well. It's a pretty simple accessory. Nothing spectacular, but it's a serviceable piece. Not really a big deal. You just pop it in his hand. And now you can have him as he's exploring the depths of the engineer's structure with his flashlight now. Not the best accessory I could think of. I almost would have rather he come with something like the jar the canister with the black ooze or something like that that would probably be a more iconic thing to pair david with but this thing works it's a fine thing to stick him with but not my favorite piece of this figure david himself is an amazing looking figure neca did a fantastic job on this body and on the sculpt from what i could tell this is a fresh body mold that they haven't used before and it's very very well done for the most part now, I can imagine for any other Prometheus male crew members, we'll probably just get the same body with other retooled parts on it. But we have the kind of chest armor plate here. There's a Whalen Corporation logo in the middle. I believe that's the Prometheus ship logo in there. It's little wings or something down here. Little emblem here. It looks like a little Spartan helmet. There's the big high collar around his neck. Another Whalen logo in the back. Some great detailing on the back of this spacesuit. It has kind of little vents and ports and mesh in here. It looks really nice. You can even see the latches on the sides here. That would actually allow this to connect on him as a costume piece or a armor piece, whatever you want to call it. Down here, he's got a bunch of accessories pinned to his butt. He has his belt. I believe this is a flashlight or something on the side. It does not come off. It's a lot of good detail. A lot of nice silver and gray dry brushing effects on these belts and armor pieces just really bring it to life more armor down the legs some really nice boots once again with the mesh texture in between the metal pieces making it look really really cool and there's actually a dirt effect done on the boots it's not done elsewhere on the figure that makes him look like he's been walking around the dust the arms are good as well a little sparse on the metal bits here somewhere on the elbow around the wrist and we have the hand, which is a really cool glove effect with the individual fingers on it and everything. Very cool looking. Everywhere that there's not the heavy metal plating, he has the blue jumpsuit kind of thing, which is nice looking. It has some blue piping that kind of sticks out, some nice sculpted piping on it as well. Just all through it, different shades. The only downside is, I kind of wish we would have been able to get him just in the jumpsuit, since that's what they kind of wear casual wear on the ship itself if these pieces had been somehow removable you could have had a whole separate figure in its own right somehow and you really could have justified picking up two or three of these guys if you had removable armor bits but already i'm going to argue as this review goes on that you could already justify picking up two davids so nega already did a lot of work on it here on his shoulder we have his little camera it has a swivel base on it you go up and down pan up and down really cool looking has the cable that comes around behind him and pegs into the box on his butt now one issue i have with this cable is that he comes packaged into the box with a black twist tie which is about the same thickness as this and at least mine in package the cable is routed around the front of the figure which is not movie accurate from what i can tell i 
almost screwed up big time and just yanked on this to try to get it out because I thought it was part of the packaging. I thought it was just a packaging garbage stuff that needed to come out. And I'm glad I didn't break it, but that's something to be wary of is this may look a little bit like what they're packaging them with. I wish they almost would have used a clear or something kind of twist tie on them just so that you didn't have that mistake happen. David's face is really nicely done. It looks a lot like Michael Fassbender. Just a very, very good likeness in plastic. The prototypes had looked amazing, and then I saw some production photos, and they didn't look so good. I was a little worried. And the final product still isn't as amazing as the prototype was, but it's still a very, very solid figure and a very good-looking figure, and it looks a lot like the actor. Some good, subtle flesh tones, gradients in the flesh tones. The eyes are done well. The dyed hair looks really good. And I would even say if you needed a custom head for your X-Men First Class Magneto, you could probably work with this and get decent results. Very, very cool head sculpt. But it's not the only head sculpt we get. We can take this head and we can pop it off. And we could pop on the second head sculpt. Now it's a similar expression, but he has the kind of leathery flight helmet on, which has some great detail work on it as well. David up here on the top has a little nameplate on his head, which I thought was very convenient in the movie. It, it, it made it really easy to learn some of the characters' names a little quicker than you might otherwise. I'm always horrible with character names in movies, especially with large groups like this. But then we also get the helmet and that's really nicely made it will actually just slide over top and peg into the collar there and there we have him in his big fish bubble helmet i like it a lot it's a nice clear plastic there's no real horrible seams going through it that aren't movie accurate it has the rim around here it has the gold kind of display piece up here at the top now one thing that i noticed looks a little funky with this in plastic form is that in the movie, these helmets lit up so much. They are full of LEDs and it reflected off the characters' faces. I think even in this gold bar, the practical costumes even had built-in little LCD monitors. So obviously we don't get something like that on this character, which I don't expect out of NECA. I'm amazed they're doing LEDs on some of the upcoming Portal figures. If it was a Hot Toys, I would be disappointed that it didn't have it. But since it is NECA... I'm not going to complain about it. It's not a big deal. I think if you wanted to do a little custom job and put some LEDs in there and route the wires very carefully, you'd probably make it so you had to have the helmet on them all the time, but it could probably be an amazing looking custom. But it's not necessary. Now another cool feature is you could take this camera on his shoulder and pop it right off, and then it will peg into the top of his helmet. So now he has the camera up there, so he gets the POV view like he would in the movie. It's a great little detail to add in there. It's something kind of unexpected. I think a lot of people would have been okay if that just sat permanently on the shoulder, but the fact that you could change it out for the two different looks really adds something to the figure and really makes it that much cooler. For articulation, David has a ball-jointed head. He looked really far up, pretty far down, side to side, tilt, all that good stuff. One problem I've had is trying to get his head centered enough so that when you put the helmet on, it looks okay. I think the helmet sits a little off center, at least on my figure it does. So you kind of have to manipulate his head so that it doesn't look goofy when it's inside there and has the bounding boxes around it. Shoulders, decent articulation, you can go up really far. The shoulder armor doesn't really hinder it. Forward, back, all the good stuff you'd expect. The elbow is my biggest gripe because it bends just fine. You get a good 90 degree bend out of it, or almost 90 degree at least, but there's no swivel in it. You can rotate here at the forearm, but you can't get it to go side to side, and it's like they put the joint in backwards. The hinge is on the upper bicep area, and the swivel part is in the forearm. The hinge really almost should have been attached to the forearm with the pin going into the bicep, to give it that swivel action. You just don't get it here, and it really hinders posability because you can't take his arm and put it further out. There's no bicep cut or anything like that. You're just stuck like that, which is really obnoxious. Plus, you get a swivel at the mid arm where that little gauntlet goes in, which is kind of useless. And then you have a ball jointed wrist, which can turn 360, go in and out, all that good stuff. So you have three ways you could rotate the forearm or the hand or anything like that 
it's unnecessary. It's really strange that they did it that way. It's disappointing. Very disappointing. He has a pretty good ball joint in his mid-torso. Up, down, side to side, all the good stuff. He has what feels like a swivel at the waist, but it almost seems like there might be a ball joint in there too, so you can kind of go forward and back a little. I don't know if it's just a loose joint or if it actually is a ball in there. The hips are kind of DC Universe style, so you have forward and back and that separate hinge coming out to the side. I like that joint. I'm kind of surprised NECA didn't do what they've done with a lot of figures and do that soft rubber diaper with the ball joints hidden underneath it, but this works for me just fine. Swivel at the upper thigh. Double jointed knee with the great bend there. And then a ball jointed foot here at the boot, which is really nice. Good range, forward and back, and also tilting side to side to get some good dynamic poses. For a size comparison, here's David next to the engineer. Now, I don't think the engineer is quite as large as it needs to be to be purely to scale, but it's not a bad scale for an action figure set. I think we always knew these engineers from NECA were a little small, at least I could always compare them to the Predators and knowing that the Predators should theoretically be shorter than the engineers, I could always kind of parse out that the humans weren't going to be the correct scale because we know NECA's done humans over and over and they're pretty much going to be the same idea height-wise. But I think at the end of the day, David is a very solid figure and I'm definitely going to recommend him. As I hinted to before, I think you could even justify two. The two separate heads and the helmet unhelmeted look gives you some very unique versions of the character. And I think you could really build something cool out of it. Now, we know in the future we're supposed to get an infected Holloway, an infected Fifield, a Shaw. And I think those are the only ones that have been completely confirmed by NECA that they're working on. Who knows, we'll see them. I know it all depends on the strength of the sales of this line. But assuming that maybe with some of those more infected characters we get versions that are more normal and come with the helmet or something, you could have the LV223 arrival team all in their helmets, all kind of first exploring the alien world. And then you could have a separate version where they're down in the depths of the engineer's ship and they don't have the helmets on anymore. And I think it could kind of be cool to display them both ways. I think I'm going to choose for the time being to display my David with the helmet on, with the little light thing in his hand, just exploring. But I think in the end, it may be worth getting two of these guys, just for the display purposes. So definitely a recommend on David. The only real ding I have against him is his stupid elbow joints, which really annoy me. And as I said before, NECA has kind of put it out there that the continuation of the Prometheus line, because it wasn't that loved of a movie, kind of depends on the sales of the figures. And as you guys know, I've been all in so far. I've gotten everything they've put out with the Prometheus line to this point. And I really do want to see the Fifield. I want to see the Holloway. I want to see the Shaw figure. Heck, I kind of want to see what people are speculating they'll do a San Diego Comic Con holographic engineer. That would be kind of cool. So, please, if you're at all interested in these, I urge you to support the line. Tell NECA that fans want more of this. Because I know I sure do. Make sure you check out Outside the Box Reviews on Facebook. I always post finds that I come across in stores on there and other random stuff. And until next time, it's been another Outside the Box Review. Prometheus has landed.